Proverbs 18 says, an unfriendly person pursues selfish ends and against all sound judgment starts quarrels. It's a hard verse to translate. Two other ways of translating it. Whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire. He breaks out against all sound judgment. A man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. He rages against all wise counsel. No matter how you translate this verse, the first part is a result of the second part. The person who turns away from wise counsel, when you want to do something and you've decided, oh, I want to do this, it's going to be great, it's going to be great, and you tell somebody about it, and they say, nah, and you tell somebody else, and they say, nah, and tell somebody else, and like, no, that's not a good idea. The answer is probably not to say, you're all dumb, I'm going to do it anyway. Of course, it's true. Some of the greatest evolutions in history, some of the greatest innovations, some of the greatest social changes ever have come through that kind of saying no. But is that really what you're up to right now? Or is it more selfish than that, right? I mean, really, we can't use the example of uh, Martin Luther King or Martin Luther as meaning we can just go do whatever we want. We're always right. We need to accept the counsel, the wisdom of other people as well. When everybody else says something is wrong and we go do it, we wind up isolated on our own. That's just basic. And we don't want to be isolated on our own. If we want to be the best people we can be, if we want to be who God wants us to be, if we want to be people who are flourishing and full and whole and well, then we have to be people as part of a community. That's true. What I want to talk about briefly, though, is during the period of isolation, there's something happening that we might not even notice. But if it happens to you, you really notice it, I guess. Some people really have a hard time conveying their tone through texts, through Facebook, through Instagram, through the phone even. Misunderstandings happen when we communicate poorly and right now when we can't always read each other's body language, we can't always hear the tone of voice, we have a tendency to misunderstand one another. And that can lead to isolation because it can lead us to avoid conversations or avoid contact. It can also lead to isolation because we can get angry with each other, fail to really come to an understanding and simply stop talking. That's the kind of thing that happens all the time. You hear about people who they haven't seen a friend in five or 10 years and they think, whatever happened to that friendship? Whatever it was that seemed so important at the time is not that important anymore. But the isolation is real. And so during this pandemic, I would implore you to avoid misunderstandings and not to do so by avoiding contact, but simply by being open. Let's accept that we don't know what's happening with each other. Let's accept that maybe the person we're talking to has suffered some grievous loss and not been able to grieve properly. Maybe they lost a friend or family member and they haven't been able to grieve. Maybe they're overwhelmed by the constant barrage of news that's bad. Maybe they've lost their job and they don't want to tell you. Maybe their kids are more off the rails than they ever realized. We just don't know what's happening beneath the surface. So let's be slow to anger, slow to judge, slow to move towards isolation, slow to move away from relationships with people. And if we can, can we be compassionate and merciful and open? If we're open with our own vulnerabilities, other people can be more open with us. And that is a great gift to offer. Isolation is to be avoided. No matter how you translate that verse, we need to avoid isolation. And some people find themselves deeply isolated these days. Let's not make it any worse than it has to be. Let's be God-fearing, God agents in the world. Lights in a world of darkness open to the vulnerability like Jesus who was open to leaving heaven and becoming embodied and enfleshed and that means vulnerable. Let's do that. Let's be vulnerable and understanding with each other. Let's copy his lead. It's okay. We can do it because our wealth is not in this world. Our glory is not in this world. We look to this future horizon of eternal life where all things shall be well, where all our relationships are made whole again, where the earth is renewed again. And that means for now, we can be vulnerable. We can be compassionate. We can be merciful. So let's. Father, we thank you that we can learn to be more and more like you. May your Holy Spirit guide us along the path of sanctification. That we would be gentler and kinder with one another. That we would be able to reach out for help when we need it. 
we ask it in Christ's name. Amen.